Hi there, this lecture is going to be looking at um, how useful interviews are in sociological research. Um, so when examining how useful a research method is, you need to uh, be able to refer to the following standards in, um, in any uh, essay answer, uh, both at GCSE and A-level actually. Uh, so any practical issues, any ethical issues or strengths, sorry, uh, reliability, uh, strengths and weaknesses, any representativeness issues or generalizability. Um, uh, and uh, validity or how valid the research method is and I will talk to you a little bit about mixed methods approach as well uh, which is often the solution uh, if you have one method that's really valid but very um, unreliable how would you overcome that through the mixed methods approach so let's have a quick look at the variations in interviews there's a few um, so you have um, structured interviews and unstructured interviews uh, so structured interviews uh, will follow a strict list of questions um, they will um, be asked in exactly the same way in exactly the same order and quite often in a structured interview they will also have some restricted responses as well so it almost becomes a bit like a verbal closed questionnaire but you're in person you're asking someone one-to-one -one, so you've got that human interaction which you don't get with questionnaires uh, in structured interviews you can of course have open questions um, they are easier to draw comparisons between different respondents even if they're open you can compare what different people say to the same question so they're a bit easier to analyze in that sense um, but obviously if you ask open questions uh, you will get qualitative data generally structured interviews will be have a lot more closed questions and therefore will collect more quantitative data um, unstructured interviews uh, flow a lot more like a conversation they are much more relaxed um, often the researcher will have a very uh, loose idea of what questions they want to cover they might have a list of maybe five to ten questions that they might ask um, but they don't have to stick to that list um, it, they normally take place in a much more relaxed environment so it could be um, in someone's um, living room it could be in a, in a coffee shop um, and the idea is that the researcher is able to ask, um, you know, change the questions, ask probing questions, but the respondent leads the discussion. And if the researcher thinks something sounds interesting, they can ask questions in that area. So they might completely deviate from the original sort of list of ideas that they wanted to cover in the conversation. That's an unstructured interview, uh, much more relaxed. Uh, and finally, there's also what's known as a group interview. Um, now, group interviews, even if the researcher does have a strict list of questions, they are generally considered unstructured because the conversation and the flow of the interview uh, will be more controlled by the participants okay, and their discussion between themselves. So a group interview isn't like one person asking questions to each person around the room. It's the uh, the interview will ask a question and the group will discuss an answer to that question. okay. Uh, and so it's quite a useful way of interviewing a lot of people at once. Uh, however, you will cr collect qualitative data from that method. Sorry, I meant to mention unstructured interviews as well qualitative data, lots of detail, lots of rich explanations. Obviously, it'll take a lot longer to analyze as a result. So let's have a quick look at the um, evaluating interviews and how useful they are or not. Uh, this is a bit more difficult because there's a few more variations than perhaps questionnaires. Um, so interviews are considered um, useful. Um, pr practically, um, structured interviews are, are considered a lot more practical. Uh, they are much quicker to do than other types of interviews because they have the strict questions they follow and quite often have restricted closed responses. Um, they structured with closed questions, therefore will generate quantitative data, uh, which again, quick to collect. Um, but also you're more likely, you're much, it's much easier to analyze as a result. Okay, it's much quicker to analyze the information. Uh, interviews are considered highly ethical because um, people can just opt out. They can say, oh, I don't want to do that. They can refuse to take part. So that's ethical. You're not forcing someone into a situation. Um, sensitive issues are actually quite well suited to unstructured interviews. So in a much more relaxed environment where the interviewer and the interviewee will spend a lot more time discussing an issue, that's a much more appropriate environment to maybe talk about sensitive issues, whether it's to do with, I don't know, uh, having family matters, um, being a victim of a crime, um, you know, failure in school. You know, these are all sensitive issues that you, you probably would prefer a much more relaxed discussion with someone you trust than a much more structured uh, interview where you might clam up. Um, 
You can debrief afterwards quite easily, check someone's all right, ask if they need any additional support. And of course, you get informed consent. Uh, people to take part in the study would be, you'd have to explain to them what it's about fully and they would have to give their consent to take part and so therefore there's no deception. Um, interviews, generally structured interviews are considered reliable, okay, because they follow those sort of standardised questions asked in the same way in the same order. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, group and unstructured are not considered re are reliable. Um, representatives, certainly. So structured interviews can have a much larger sample than the other types of interviews, as can be done much quicker. However, they'll, they won't be as representative as perhaps questionnaires because you, it's much quicker to send out 100 questionnaires than to do 100 structured interviews, for example. Um, and in terms of validity, um, interviews, whether it's uh, structured un or unstructured, it's much more difficult to lie, arguably, when you're face to face with an interviewer or an interviewer might spot evidence of lying. Um, so that can make them more valid. Um, you can build a rapport in an unstructured interview. So a rapport is, um, you know, when the interviewer and the interviewee, they sort of form a sort of almost like a trusting relationship uh, and the interviewee will be much more relaxed and feel that they can, you know, be a bit more open and honest with the interviewer. And in group interviews, um, individuals might relax a lot more in that environment. They might feel that they're not under a lot of pressure to respond in a particular way. They might feel, oh, look, my views are similar to someone else in the group. So they might be a bit more open and honest, perhaps, particularly about sensitive issues or issues where maybe they've been a bit more deviant. They might be a bit more um, open to admitting to what they've been up to if others in the group are doing the same. So that can increase the validity. Um, in terms of them not being useful, there are plenty of practical issues. So interviewers take interviews take time, a lot more time than questionnaires. Um, so as a result of them taking time, and I guess this links down to the representativeness, um, people might be less likely to take part because they haven't got that much time to spend being interviewed. Okay, so that can lower the representativeness. Um, Interviews are more costly than questionnaires. Um, you might have to hire an interview space, whether that be an office or a room. Uh, you might have to take people out for coffee or perhaps food. Um, uh, so that will cost a bit of money. And also your own personal time. Like if it's taking you a lot of time to do it, then you know that's going to be much more costly in terms of you know you and your salary perhaps. Um, Access might be difficult to um, individuals or groups because of the time it takes to do, to do an interview. Um, you know, if you need to get uh, interview students in a school, a head teacher might be like, well, no, I don't want children taken out of at for hours of lessons for an interview. No, thank you, because it'll affect their education. And likewise, individuals might refuse because they, they haven't got the time to take part. Um, and finally, if it, if you have collected qualitative data, like you'd get from an unstructured or group interview, that's going to take a lot longer to analyze that data. So practically, um, unstructured interviews are not considered particularly practical, whereas structured are considered a bit more practical. Um, ethical issues to keep an eye out for uh, is like the power imbalance that exists between the interviewer and the interviewee. Um, if the interviewer is slightly older than the interviewee, so if it's an adult interviewing students, then the students may feel that they, uh, they can't say no to taking part, which is unethical. Um, or they might answer in a way that they want to impress the interviewer, which actually is an issue with validity as well. Um, and actually discussing sensitive issues can cause upset. So even if it is an unstructured interview or a structured interview, um, even if the participant does feel fairly relaxed, they might still become upset by discussing some of the answers to the questions, particularly, like I said, if it's around things like family issues, criminality, it, or being victim victimised, um, you could still cause psychological harm through your interview. So you have to be very skilled as an interviewer to make sure that doesn't happen. And that's where the debrief comes in um, to kind of help anyone who has become upset. Um, representative issues. So, um, like I said, structured much more representative because they're quicker. However, the unstructured interviews, um, you, they take a lot longer um, and there's not a whole lot of time to do, say, 100 unstructured interviews would take you hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, so that's a bit unrealistic. So as a result, quite often, if you just use unstructured research, uh, unstructured interviews, your research will be considered unrepresentative. Um, 
reliability uh, can be an issue, particularly in group and unstructured, because you know there's no set strict questions to follow. Um, so it's mu it's very difficult to repeat and get exactly the same types of responses with a different group, for example. Um, someone else could not could, would find it hard to replicate your research a year later because you wouldn't even maybe have a list of the things that were, you asked because you might have gone off topic. You might have asked a question you hadn't even thought about. So that lowers the reliability. But don't forget that structured are considered highly reliable. And then validity issues. So same as in questionnaires, um, you could ask leading questions. Um, you know, you could ask someone, um, you, know, uh, you know, do you think bullying's awful? Um, I'm kind of the way I'm asking it. I'm, I'm get, trying to get a response that you go, yeah, yeah, it, of course it's awful. I, I'm led you to that response. Hopefully, most people would think bullying's awful work though. Um, and the fact that you're there asking a question increases social desirability. So um, structured, you're much more likely to get social desirability because it's a formal environment. Uh, people might want to be impressed. People they might be more aware that they're being researched. They might respond in a way that they think is desirable or is correct. Um, arguably that lowers in unstructured like it's less there's less social desirability because the respondents more relaxed and they're more open and honest and true but i think it's still there even in an unstructured interview and also with group interviews you've got social desirability again but it's to the rest of the group so are they trying to impress group members particularly when you're interviewing maybe younger people they might want to play up to their peer group for example so you might not be getting the truth um, so that's kind of examining the usefulness of interviews. Just want to finish by talking to you very briefly about mixed methods. You might have seen this before. Um, methods that are generally high in reliability and representativeness are often low in validity. So you generally want to find a weakness in one method. You want to make up for it using a strength in another. Um, so in questionnaires, um, which are reliable but low in validity, you might use unstructured interviews to check what you found out was true. Um, so have a go in this activity. I varied it slightly from the last time. If I wanted to use unstructured interviews, what's the main weakness of an unstructured interview this time? Okay, um, and what method could I possibly use that would make up for the weakness of an unstructured interview? Thanks for listening, guys. Bye.